We'll start by talking what Stride is, uh, at least from an overview standpoint. Uh, and Stride's all of these different things. So, you know, really, um, regardless of one person's or a person's given industry, and we work with folks in business consulting. Um, that's one of our, of course, our primary areas. Um, it, as is financial consultants, uh, commercial realtors, business brokers. Uh, when I say financial consultants, I mean, you know, stocks, bonds, mutual funds, insurances, things of that nature. Um, Really, anybody, business brokers, anybody that interfaces with business owners, but of course, our primary uh, core competency and discipline uh, is is that of business consulting, um, because that's really really our industry. And in that area, um, we're able to facilitate substantial opportunity in the fields of, of differentiation, marketing, automation, all these different things. I'm not going to go through them individually. That's that's more um, there's detailed and customized training on that once an advisor's in. We're really going to spend um, you know the bulk of of this webinar um, focusing largely on differentiation. Um, we'll touch on virality at the end <clears throat> and even the automation tool that we have uh, at the very end, but um, the differentiation component is really where we focus a lot of our energy uh, relative to this particular call. So we talk about um, differentiation and uh, facilitating the different goals uh, associated with all business consultants. You know, the key naturally is to get in front, get in front of uh, more prospects. And so the key is obviously. Um, through differentiation, getting in front of more people than ever before, and then uh, that's not enough, of course. The goal is not just to get in front of them, but, of course, to close them. And in the process of closing the deals, we all seek to make more money. Um, and so the key to doing that, when we talk about making more money um, and what uh, Stride facilitates, it's really the opportunity to sell more than ever before. Um, when we talk about selling more than ever before, the key, of course, is to be uh, functioning and participating in the best markets. As you guys know, we talk about being business consultants. Um, the best market, of course, are business owners. And now is actually kind of a unique time. And uh, those of you that have been around for any duration and have attended certain of my calls, um, you've heard me talk, especially in the last few weeks, a lot about uh, this period of time. And what a uh, unique period uh, of time that we're in right now. And there's a lot of statistics associated with this. Um, Jeremy, I'm not sure if you're able to, and I don't want to uh, un yep, undo and mute anybody, but thank you. Yep. Um, you know, the, the, the period of time that I'm talking about, and again, there's lots of stats out there, a lot of third-party stats associated with this, and <laughs> virtually anything I say, um, we fall back on, on validated material all the time is that right now uh, our nation is in a uh, rather substantial state of flux and, and, and going through the largest economic shift in, in its history. And it's not just in our nation's history. This is the largest uh, economic transitionary period that has ever occurred in the world. And, and what that is is there's about – uh, approximately, it's not an exact figure, but there's approximately 18 million businesses that started and will continue to change hands uh, between now and eight years from now, eight to ten years from now. The initial studies that were done said it was a decade, a ten-year period, and they, they were done two years ago. So that's where the eight-year figure comes in. But they won't all transit in that period of time. It'll linger for another couple of years. Point being, this is a $12 trillion industry. We're in the throes of it right now, uh, and that's what makes this not just the best market, but the best time to be in the best market. Um, statistically speaking, these businesses have little to no representation in the business consulting fields. Um, so when you look at what it is that Stride does, most of these folks do not have financial planners, do not have insurance agents, do not have uh, comprehensive consultants, lack uh, just qualitative and quantitative uh, tax planning, tax strategies, all different things that Stride uniquely brings to the table. And, and, and through all the things that we uniquely bring to the table uh, and how we bring them to the table, we're able to bring substantial differentiation. So uh, in that, of course, when we're able to bring substantial differentiation within this best market, we're then able to facilitate an enthusiastic welcome. So it's through these, these tools, these strategies, these approaches that while functioning in the best market and providing substantial differentiation uh, for the first time in any consultant's career, uh, they're met with an aggressive and enthusiastic welcome, which is, is critical to our uh, success within this program. Um, this is uh, superfluous. This is a component that's built in. Many times we have uh, financial consultants, and so we, we get critical during this stretch of the, um, of the industries that so many of them focus in, and those are the different topics that you saw there, the senior market, um, 
This is kind of what I was touching on a few moments ago, the $12 trillion market. Here's a study uh, that talks about the number of businesses that expect to change hands uh, during the next handful of years. It says 54% of the 28 million are the ones that expect to change hands. Then there's another uh, 10% that don't expect to change hands but will because of economic shift, uh, unexpected health issues, loss of a key person, whatever the case may be. Uh, what you see here in the middle of your screen, 72% uh, have no exit strategy. Another 14% started uh, but didn't finish. 86% then are not prepared for the transition. And, you know, really when you think about that and why that's relevant, it's because with this transition that's coming, um, you're in a unique position in, in the form of business consulting and all the different things that you do. And then, of course, again, in association with Stride, to be able to provide a standout opportunity and a real intangible benefit. And what I mean when I say standout opportunity is that, that whether these businesses, whether the, uh, of the 28 million, a business owner happens to be among the approximate 18, they're going to change hands or not, there's one universal truth uh, relative to all of them. And that universal truth is that they all desire to be more profitable. And fundamentally, that's who we are and that's what we do. At the tip of our spear is a process we call cost remediation. I'm going to get to that here in a few moments. But with cost remediation, uh, providing uh, enhanced profitability is our business. So the, the technical definition for cost remediation is the avenue through which we seek to reduce, refine, or recapture operational costs and or engage in tax mitigation. And again, that's the complex. The simplified explanation is we're going to make your business more profitable. That is a standout offering. The profitability is real and is a real and tangible benefit, and that's something that all too often in the sales world and consulting world, we're able to offer hypothetical promises. And that's what you see uh, all of your peers out there, the other folks out there that want to get in front of businesses and business owners, all they're offering are hypothetical promises. We here at Stride offer a real and tangible benefit, and when we talk about doing so in a standout fashion, we're able to accomplish this at, in, 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 from a competitive standpoint in a way that nobody else can. And that then lends itself to this enthusiastic welcome that I'm talking about. So the reason we're able to uh, accomplish this enthusiastic welcome is through the fact that, as I was saying a moment ago, we are received well because what we're bringing to the table applies to every one of these folks. You look at uh, 28 million privately held businesses in this country, and each and every single one of them are interested in enhanced profitability. In fact, what I talk about all too often is if you look at a business owner, 28 million of them, you look at how they spend their days. How do they, what do they do? What are their daily activities? And so if you, if you look at this, see every consultation they pay for, every book they buy, every seminar they attend, every person they hire, all of it is meant toward enhancing profitability, making more money, being more successful. And when you can, when your product, your service, your system, whatever it is that you're trying to sell is exactly that, it's enhanced profitability, then what you're bringing to the table applies to each and every person you want to talk to. Not only does it apply, as I denoted a moment ago, it's, it's universally pursued. So it applies to all of them, and they're already pursuing it even before you get to them, which puts you, again, in a unique position. You're offering it's a, it's, a, it's a form of differentiation when what it is that you're selling is something they're already seeking, and you're able to stand out in a substantial fashion because what they're seeking is something not only do you provide, but you do so from a no-risk fashion. And what I mean there, and you'll see a sample of here in a few moments, is that <clears throat> what we do is without causing any form of disruption, we look at how they're spending money, we look at their activities, we look at their assets, we look at different things associated with them, and we find avenues through which to reduce or mitigate tax, reduce or mitigate expenses. Without, again, any form of disruption. I'm going to show you guys some real-life examples of this here in a moment. And what that means is without downtime, without changing anything, without distracting them, without tying up the time of their key employees, their executives, without tying up the time of the business owner, we're able to step in and do an analysis at no upfront cost to them. We do it on my dollar, myself and my partners. At no upfront cost to them, we come in, we do our studies, we show them what we can do for them, and then we are only paid after we've been successful in putting that money in their pocket, and then again, only as a percentage of that success. So we talk about real and tangible. I'm talking about in a matter of weeks, 
from the first time you ever have a conversation with somebody, they have real and tangible money in their hands. So it's not a long-term leap of faith. It's not an assertion. It's not a promise. It's not a pay me today, and at some point down the road, you're going to recapture these expenses and then some. This is real and tangible. It's right now today, no risk to you. We're going to spend my money to make you more profitable. And then after I've been successful, I get to keep a piece of it. So when we talk about applicability again, the enthusiastic welcome, we accomplish that through giving them something that applies, them being business owners, giving them something that applies to them universally, giving something that they universally pursue, and doing it on my dollar at my risk, not theirs. And finally, because of what we do and how we do it, we have zero competition. There's nobody else out there that can do or does do what we do. So if we pause for a moment, let's see if I can figure this out. Yep, I did. We will. Hmm. I had my app open. Let's see if I can go find it here real quick. This is our app. Um, this is the tool. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm going to tease and taunt some of you guys and say that every single one of you should have this app. If you don't have the app, you're operating at a, at a disadvantage. Uh, so go out there, register for Stride, get yourself the app. Um, every single Friday, we and, and there may be those of you that, that are have actually gone and gotten the app, um, that uh, have been on our Friday calls. And so before I jump into this, I'll explain what we do on Friday. We've been doing this for just over a decade, uh, and, and we don't have any more Friday calls uh, before the end of this year because as of, uh, well, tomorrow and the next day I'm out of town and meetings for a couple of days. Uh, Thursday I work half a day, and then I'm taking a vacation that I very, very desperately need. Um, so I'm not going to be around to run our Friday calls, and I run them. So, but we do, I think we did 48 of them this year. So not every Friday, but most. And on the Friday calls, there's a few different things we cover, but uh, the key or the thing that everybody likes the best is the guest speakers, or are the guest speakers, I should say. And um, so we bring on two, three, four, sometimes five guest speakers a week. They're always a new advisor, so it's never the same person twice. been doing it, like I said, for just over 10 years. I see about thousands of advisors over the years uh, that come on and, and talk about the success of the program. And um, I don't believe that there's – I've never heard of, anyhow, uh, that there's another company in the world uh, that's been able to week after week, month after month, year after year for over a decade uh, put on guest speakers – uh, to come join and, and talk about the successes they have in running our program. And, and, you know, most recently since the release of the app, um, it just makes everything that much easier. You don't have to be the expert. In fact, after an hour of training, uh, 62% is an average. We have new advisors, of course, to join us every single day. Um, every we, we break everybody into blocks or what we call them classes of, of by the week. Every single week, each new class, statistically speaking, is a long-term average. 62% of you guys will submit your first piece of business after your first hour of training. And that's what this app is meant to facilitate. You'll see that here in a moment, is, is making you the expert through the software and then putting you in a position so that you don't actually have to validate that. We have the staff that comes in behind you. All of the experts are here in my office. Not right now because it's 6.30 at night. Most of them are home. But... Generally speaking, during most traditional hours, they're here. And so, page, uh, this is the industries page. And so you can go industry by industry and get keynotes, topics on the different industries. Um, let's scroll down. Let's show you how the darn thing actually works. We'll pick this one. These are pre-popped sample clients. And when you enter it, Say we're going to run it in person. We're going to enter the information. You'll see it's a lot of point and click, really simple stuff. Anybody can run this, including um, we actually had, uh, had my son on a call a little while back. Uh, funny story. I won't go through the whole story, but funny story was he was bugging me. We were out uh, shopping. It's the summertime. We were out at the uh, landscaping store, and um, it was a big, actually, nursery and landscaping company. And he was bugging me about a video game he wanted to have, and I got sick of him bugging me. And I said, tell you what, go earn some money, and you can buy it yourself. And uh, kind of a bashful little guy, uh, 10 years old, and uh, was reluctant at first, but it, it, wanting his Star Wars video game got the better of him. And he went up to the manager, ran the app, and uh, two weeks later, he made quite a pile of money. Um, so it's really simple stuff. It's easy to do. It's very logic-based. What you'll see up here is <clears throat> you've got a spot to enter. Uh, the name of the owner or the person you're working with, uh, their status or job classification. Um, over here is a drop-down. You can select different industries. 
uh, in this case it's manufacturing. What all this does is this is interactive software. So we've got over 250,000 uh, studies that we've done in-house that went into creating an algorithm uh, that goes behind this software and the questions that are asked and the results that then get spit out on the back end. But in addition to that, um, there's also logic base in here. So when we enter president right here, that's going to change the order of the summaries uh, as compared to manager or CEO or whatever the case may be. Look at presidents. Presidents are almost universally owners, and we know owners hate paying property tax. So the moment that gets entered, we know that property tax will be the first bit of subject matter we cover on the back end. Uh, look at, with that, we're looking at psychological buy trends and different things that, that we know uh, trigger them. Over here, when I enter manufacturing... I do that because not only um, not only does our algorithm go to work in real time within the software, but we're also tied to uh, regional, state, and federal tax databases in real time. And so it's going to look toward manufacturing stuff. We're going to look to state. We're going to look at area code, zip code, all that great stuff. And again, we're going to be tied in in real time. So as we're imputing data, the results we get are going to be hyper accurate. Very simple question, uh, do you own any commercial property? I'm going to click yes. This is all pre-populated. Um, how much did we purchase or build it for? A million dollars. What renovations have we done? Half a million dollars. I'm going to breeze through this, guys, because it's, it's, it's real simple stuff. You, you see what it is. Um, property taxes. So this is for the property tax audit. Uh, payroll is R&D, hired incentives, things of that nature. Um, look forward, look back, current year, all sorts of stuff like that. How many new employees, including uh, replacements, again, tax credits, hiring incentive, WASI, uh, all of those different things. And again, don't worry if you don't know what that, any of that means. You don't have to. Uh, you learn it very, very quickly, and uh, the software kind of takes care of that for you. Credit card. Um, so are we a merchant processor? No, we are not a merchant processor. We don't do any of that stuff. You guys see, I'll enter. Let's just say they do two and a, uh, uh, let's say two and a half million dollars a year. Um, swiped means in facility, not swipe means card not present. Um, we're not a merchant processor. Don't work with a merchant processor. Uh, this is an opportunity to audit their merchant processor. And, you know, based on what you guys do, you understand that the, the competition out there uh, many times abuses their clients and takes money they shouldn't take. In fact, the federal government said that the average processor, I'm sorry, across the board, the processors that do that take somewhere between 70 and $80 billion a year from their business owner clients that they shouldn't take. Uh, so it's a great opportunity for you guys to um, claw back money, undermine the competition, and be able to open up more opportunities for yourselves. Waste recycling, um, are you spending more than $300 a month? Yeah, uh, generally speaking, they're spending a few bucks anyhow. Um, workers' comp premium, is it over that? Um, yes, uh, let's say your workers' comp, most of them, any decent-sized business, your workers' comp will be about uh, somewhere in that for the size company that I know this one to be. And there we are. We very quickly, in real time, have a calculation here, and I can go back, watch this, and I'll change a figure, and I'll change it to $1.2 million. And you'll see that, again, it is real time because it changes that figure. So everything you put in affects this thing again in real time. Now, again, I know who this client is, and 1.2 million would not be accurate. So we'll do that. And here you are in a position to talk to that uh, business owner saying, here, at, at no uh, upfront cost to you, at no risk to you, uh, I'm going to put about two, uh, $240,000 back in your pocket. going to do it on my dollar. And uh, when I do that, I'm going to keep a piece of it. And again, you don't have to memorize all of this. It's right here for you. Again, like I said, because they identified themselves as the president, we know the property tax is irksome to them, and so that's the first one we list. Here we're going to put $20,000 back in their pocket. And again, service summary. You do not have to be the expert. This explains what the service is. This explains how it works. This explains how we get paid. 50% of first year, nothing thereafter. Not only is it an educational tool, a solicitation tool, it's a validation tool as well. Here are examples of clients. And we do that topic by topic by topic all the way through. And that's, I'm not going to be overly redundant. Um, what I, do I want to schedule a call? Well, our system went and looked at everything that they qualified for based on the answers, based on our findings. And what it does is it reaches out and overlays all of our staffs, the appropriate staff's calendars in real time, so that you don't have to say, well, geez, you know, they qualified for this, so I need to go talk to Bill, and I need to bring Tom in, and I should probably grab Chris uh, and maybe Jessica. 
um, and then I need to coordinate all their calendars with the calendar of the business owner. Holy cow, what a pain in the rear end that's going to be. And by the time I get that done and figured out, I'm going to lose momentum on this case. So no, we don't have to do that. Calendar overlays everybody's, uh, our calendar system overlays everybody's calendar in real time. And you know when you pick one of these, it's a time that every single one of the required people can be on that call. I'm going to confirm, and I'm done. That takes care of that for me. Now, I'm going to keep going. Again, psycho- psychology. Psychology says, well, you booked a call. There's first uh, buy signal. Now, I'm going to remind you of all the money I'm going to put in your pocket. There's some dialogue we're going to train you guys on. And then immediately, I'm going to go to the contract. And right now, <clears throat> what you're going to see here is no cost, just like I said. And then for the fees or for the systems that we do, we're going to see 10% for cost say, 35 for R&D, 15 uh, for hiring incentives, et cetera, et cetera, 50% for property tax, shortest contract you'll ever see in your life. And they can sign right there in real time on your smartphone, on your tablet, on your laptop. That was the tax uh, side of things. This is the cost saving side of things, no cost. Fee to be charged, 50% of refunds, reimbursements, identified savings. And again, we're going to sign and wrap that up. And then we're done. We're going to go and look at other services that we offer. We're going to do our doc collect. And that's already in here, so it's not going to show me um, that again. Be rather redundant. But anyhow, what it'll do if it wasn't already entered as this one is, uh, it'll give you a list of the documents that we need. You click on the document, and it has a spot to enter an email. Say, Mr. and Mrs. Business Owner, um, who's going to give me your depreciation schedule because we identified a cost sake study? Uh, they're going to say, oh, well, my CPA has that. Great. What's their email? Write it in. Go through topic by topic. That's Again, this has already been done, so it's not showing it again because we don't want to be redundant in emailing them. Um, click Done. They get a very professional email. You copy the business owner on it. system takes care of all of that. It says, hey, Sally, uh, John, the business owner, uh, needs these documents filled out for our meeting Tuesday at 10 a.m. Um, I need these uploaded here into our secure system. Please send them in so that we can complete our study and have exact figures for John uh, at our meeting. Because John's copied on it, they know that it's the real deal. That's validation. Um, they get it done because that's their job to get it done. And by the time you get back to your office, our staff is already working on it, is prepared for your call to go get this thing wrapped up and get you guys paid. That is the software. Um, Jeremy, if you would, let's just because it worked last time, let's have you take the screen back again and then give it back to me. And let's hear. I'll try that real quick. Can All you right. see my slides? So here's a sample case, guys. This is an advisor that was with us a grand total of 10 days. In their first 10 days, uh, they went in. They were in a car dealership. Uh, they went in to get the um, tires changed over on their car. Uh, Jeremy, you've seen this a handful yep. of times. This is mm-hmm. the same sample case we use all the time. Um, what Jeremy will tell you guys is that, and I say this before I get into the slide every time, is um, this is not a big case. So all too often I use this sample case, and uh, the folks on a call assume, well, geez, you know, that, that looks great, but it's probably the biggest case they ever did. Um, no, guys, anything but. Uh, the biggest case uh, of this year is when an advisor came on, and you see this, um, this fourth bullet point right here, SRP, Stride Retirement Program, uh, and his commission on that uh, was $3.8 million dollars, in one case before we talk about any of the other services. Now, that's a big case. This right here is an extremely average case, which you hear your peers talk about on every Friday call. Uh, this is not by any stretch of the imagination a big case. This is at best an average case. So again, <clears throat> gentleman was with us all of 10 days. Um, he had, had to go in to do a seasonal tire changeover on his car. Uh, it was coming into the um, it was coming into the, the spring. This is an old slide, and um, wanted to take the winter tires off. Was putting the summer tires on. And you guys know when you do something like that, it doesn't take all day or two days, and you're just going to be there for a little while. But it also takes more than 15 minutes. So he knew he had to kill some time. So we wanted over to the showroom, um, which then resulted in him remembering some of the training, and we tell people what to look for in different industries. And he saw that that uh, facility had recently spent some money on uh, a facelift. And so he called the manager over, who hustled over, because generally when somebody asks for a manager, they've got a problem. And um, that can go viral pretty fast in a showroom. So manager hustled over and wanted to see what's going on. And according to his own uh, expression, again, in our, we had the manager join us on a call as well. 
uh, manager actually signed up to uh, offer Stride, which I thought was really cool. Uh, as as an aside, um, manager came over. Uh, the advisor started running Presentation Pro software, the very same stuff I just showed you a few moments ago. Manager said, excuse me, um, if you would stay right here, I'll be right back. Ran upstairs, came back down with a slightly older gentleman in tow, and it turned out the owner was there. Um, apologized for the interruption, asked the advisor to start over. The advisor got to start the relationship with the client by showing him how he could hand him $413,000 at no out-of-pocket cost and no risk to him spending my money to go see if he can't get that $413,000 put in his pocket. And I promise you there is no better way in the world to start a relationship. And oh, by the way, he got paid about $6,200 to do it. That then led to the merchant audit uh, where we identified that they were being overcharged uh, by $37,000. As I said before, great opportunity for you guys. Another $5,500 uh, just in recapture. We identified uh, that they had the loan that they had used for a portion of uh, the financing to do the renovations on their property uh, was was overpriced. Uh, they were paying too unnecessarily high interest rate. Uh, there were no prepayment penalties on the loan, so we were able to come in and refinance at another twenty one thousand uh, dollars. So at this point, you're thirty two thousand dollars, thirty two thousand seven hundred dollars approximately in commission. And then we did a small SRP. Actually, there two of them. There were two partners, one apiece. The average commission on the average SRP is $162,000 to you guys. So you see this is a small one because two of them are less than the average on one. Um, but still not a bad day, uh, no matter how you look at it. You're the better part of $200,000 in commission. And then the uh, the CPA turned around because we worked with them on the cost sake study and the SRP, turned around and said, you know, this is stuff I've never seen. Uh, it's tax. I get it. I love it. I need to do it for my clients. Um, how do I participate? They joined uh, as part of the advisor's team and uh, had already scheduled as of the, I think, the two weeks after the initial call when, when this slide was put together. They had already booked 41 discovery calls for uh, their clients, all of which, of course, uh, financially speaking, benefit the, um, the advisor. Uh, I spoke earlier that I would just touch on also briefly the um, – uh, self-registration page. Again, for those of you that, um, that take on the app, you get this. This is free. It comes with the app. comes with being a Full Stride member. Uh, this is a tool that, again, you'll hear your peers talk about every single Friday. This is a tool that goes to work for you 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Um, we give you this tool, language, point, click, park it on LinkedIn, park it on Facebook, send it out, blast it out, and it induces a shocking number of clients to self-enroll in our system. So before you've ever spoken with them, you've never talked to them, you've never solicited them, they look at this, they register, they pay, and with the business intelligence built into the system, they get pre-qualified for additional of our services, and many times, greater than 60%, uh, for as far as statistics go, uh, they uh, enroll and pay in additional services. So by the time you're made aware of the fact that you have a new client, they're already paying most often on two or three services. So it's a really, really powerful tool, works extremely well, and again, high degree of validation uh, within your peers. Virality, again, I said I would touch on that briefly. Again, need to be a full member of Stride to participate in this. Um, this is our WATSI mechanism is the foundation for this. WATSI is an acronym for Worker Opportunity Tax Credit. We developed the only tool in existence, we have no competitors for this, that actually enables uh, the tax law to do what it's meant to do. The WATSI tax law is meant to induce employers uh, to hire folks from different socioeconomic classes, uh, different backgrounds, uh, you know, criminals, immigrants, uh, people from, uh, again, like I said, lower uh, socioeconomic income areas, all sorts of different qualifiers for this. The intent of the law was to induce business owners to hire people uh, from these backgrounds. Trouble is, every single one of our competitors before us and currently offers systems that only tell you whether or not you're going to get the tax credit after you've hired the person. So, of course, that does nothing to sway your decision and turns it into a lottery system. Additionally, because of the nature of the system that everybody else uses, they can only pursue and provide this benefit economically uh, for businesses that hire at least 750 people a year. Most of them focus on the 1,000 new employee market plus. 
which is somewhere in the vicinity of 0.03% of all businesses in America, which means then that we have zero competition for 99.97% of the market, which of course is kind of cool. Beyond that now, what we did in being able to provide this tax benefit to every business in America, it becomes profitable when you look at our fee structure, it, it, down to the point that if they hire one person, if any business hires one person every two years, they are net positive on our system. So that means it's applicable to everybody. What we did here for virality, for viral uh, client acquisition, is they join us, the business owner joins us, they become a client of ours, of yours, uh, for the worker opportunity tax credit screening. So they're able to determine whether or not their uh, employee is going to get a tax credit before they hire them, which again makes the law work the way it was intended for the first time ever. And as they're reviewing resumes from different folks, well, they of course don't hire everybody. Let's say somebody wants to hire for one job. Statistically speaking, they will look at 50 resumes nationally. It's a little bit different everywhere. But statistically speaking, they're going to look at 50 different resumes for every person they hire. That means 49 of them are not going to get hired. What our system does, because they used our system to pre-screen, is it goes back out to those 49 people that didn't get hired that are now going to take their resume and put it with additional businesses. And it gives them this really, really cool certificate that says, hey, this employee comes with X tax credit. An exact figure doesn't just say X because we already screened and we know what that figure is. This, I come with a tax credit. We contact the employee and say, hey, listen, I'm going to give you this certificate, stick it in your resume. Of course, it doesn't take a leap to understand that, if you come with a tax credit, they're more likely to hire you than everybody else that sticks their resume over there, all things being equal. So this is a benefit to you. It's free. We're not charging you for it. Use this to help yourself get hired. And, of course, then they're all going to do it. When they do it and they go out to the next two, three, four, five, ten, twenty 10, 20 businesses that they put their resume at, that certificate drives that business to your WASI page. And they register to become a client. And the process repeats itself again and again and again. And you just imagine in your mind that one business running that led to these people going out and taking their certificate, parking it with three businesses, one or two or all three, then register. And everybody they don't hire gets a certificate and goes out there to additional businesses. And the darn thing goes on and on and on. And that's virality. And again, uh, it's unique to we as a company and no other institution that I'm aware of in the world has anything like that. So that's not everything uh, that you could possibly know about Stride. Of course, uh, there are those that have been here with us for a decade and a half uh, that, that are still learning because we're always rolling out new systems. Um, we have major launches planned for uh, January, February, March already, and, uh, and so we're, we're an ever-evolving, ever-growing, ever-expanding company uh, that facilitates incredible opportunities with, for, and through you guys. So that's everything. Uh, Jeremy, I'm going to hand back to you anything you want to share on your screen that's uh, everything that I needed to share on mine. <clears throat> Thank you, Jason. I really, I really appreciate it. So I, I do want to get in... Um to some some questions here in just a second. I, I just wanted to see um, Keith uh, Eichley, are you with us? All right, Keith. So um, Jason just got done explaining uh, everything to everybody on the call. Went through the presentation pro and just kind of gave a, a good overview of Stride. But I know some some folks on this call are working with you also um, on the, on the marketing, and you recently got done putting together the Stride campaign. So I wanted to see if maybe you just want to talk about that just here for a moment. <laughs> Yeah, sure. So for those that were doing, um, I don't know who on the call, I know the handful of folks out there probably on the call right now that have the extreme system focused on Agora products and services and Stride was what, the ver first campaign that we actually rolled out because it's such a powerful tool uh, and, and process. And, you know, I, I think uh, Jason hit right on the head at the beginning when he said now is the time, right? It's such a perfect environment. So we put together a, a, a uh, you know, a campaign that's based on recruiting people both online, uh, offline as well with the, with the mobile uh, apps to get people connected in so that you can start activate the, uh, the tools and the systems that, that Jason shared earlier, you know, how to use that, the, uh, the preset kind of, uh, I, I love, by the way, Jason, your case studies and broken out. I know you showed those at the beginning there, Jeremy, 
so that people can have some, some words to talk with. So this is kind of the hooking people in to start that conversation. And so we've, we've just literally turned that on and, um, just, uh, you know, in the process right now with our extreme folks uh, running that. But basically the idea is that, um, you know, we're really marketing getting the savings for folks. And, and, and Mosaic, we're actually guaranteeing them $10,000 in savings or we give them a, uh, a three-day, two-night vacation. Um, now, obviously, we know that not everybody's going to meet the meet the uh, you know criterion, but that's okay. I think, given the numbers and the success that Stride has had, it's all going to offset itself at the uh, at the end of the day. Awesome. Thank you, Keith. I appreciate you taking a moment there to just to, to put that out there for everybody. So I want to open up for questions. Um, we've, I've been long awaiting having this second call with, with Jason because I know I answer lots of questions for you guys. And then oftentimes Jason will get an email from me or Chris or his support staff, and I relay a lot of those questions and then put that in the FAQ um, section. But we're live now, so I'm going to go ahead and open up and, and let whoever wants to ask questions to Jason, you guys can do that now. This is Joel. Hey, hey, Joel. There you are. Yeah, I was. Um, you see, I was listening. I, I just love this, and I got thinking about all the veterans that were getting into the job market and career programs and so forth that we create. And uh, the WATSI uh, certificate would seem to me to be able to way to uh, help enhance their resumes in the job market. Uh, does that make sense? It does. Um, it does, Joel. One of the um, there's there's one issue with that. The system uh, that exists today legally is not, I don't mean our system. I mean just the legal application process and qualification process is meant for uh, employers that uh, are hiring or have hired rather than simply using the tool to generate the certificate as a non-employer. Uh, now we are working with the different state agencies. Uh, to facilitate a generation system where we can be compliant um, with the law, not put undue screening burden uh, on the different state departments, and at the same time create these uh, certificates for um, uh, for the veterans. And so we are in the process of releasing that product. Um, now, and it won't just be for veterans; it'll be for anybody. Um, so, you know, and, and the exciting thing is that once we get that system completed and finished, um, now you turn every person in America into your own sales team. Um, and, and I don't want to use the language like the accurate term is unwittingly, but that then sends a negative image. Uh, when you say something happens unwittingly, it's almost as though you're taking advantage of somebody. But in this example, when I say it, what I mean is they don't have to have an interest in you. They don't have to believe in your cause. They don't have to want to help you. By virtue of wanting to help themselves and go out and get a job, they're helping you. And you get that virality that we talked about, which is such an exciting thing. You know, I, and I, I will be, I'm not a boastful person, but I'll be boastful or at least proud in the standpoint that we created the first true viral system, right? If you understand virality and the true definition of it before the rest of the world and the marketing world bastardized it and changed the definition because they couldn't come up with a true viral system, virality or something that's viral is something that spreads on an indefinite basis and ever-growing, ever-expanding ever until an outside force shuts it down and if you look around at, at everything that exists today there is nothing out there that's viral everything is a flash in the pan and then uh, fizzles out unless an outside source steps in and puts more energy into it more time more money whatever the case may be well we have in fact created the first system that simply by people doing what they do the business screening people for employees to get the tax credit the people that don't get hired putting their resume out there to try to get a job just by doing what they do this system is ever expanding and then when we do what you've asked about what i've described is, is we're already working on and not far from by the way we've just then taken that existing virality which is again is unique to we nobody else has come up with a concept like that and we put it on steroids and so while we're not at that component just yet, we're almost there, and we've been working on it for a while. Uh, but again, as is the case with everything else we do, we always want to make sure we're compliant and we're in good stead uh, with the states that we work with so frequently on these hiring incentives. All right. Thank you, Jason. Did, did, that, um, mm -hmm. did that get your, your um, question answered, Joel? <laughs> yes. Uh, we uh, incorporate all of these people and um, – 
we create a uh, we enhance their their skill sets uh, with global certifications and so forth, so that they're quite uh, it, and it's a much quicker pattern than all veterans have had in the past to get into the marketplace as as veteran and their spouse type of thing, and uh, it leads to succession planning. So this to me would seem like a, a tool that, I, and so I'll follow through with you on it and uh, see how we can get it uh, in the game. Great. All right, sounds good. Okay, other questions? I think, um, Osiris, I saw you pop up for a second, and then you muted yourself. Did you have a question that you wanted to ask, Jason? Um, so I was curious if you are able to speak a little bit more about some of the, the, the different benefits that we can speak on as a, um, you know, as a rep going into a business if they have veterans or if they're a veteran-based business owner. Well, I think that... Um yeah, I think that's a good question, but uh, I'm, I'm really big on, and I, so I apologize in advance, but there's logic behind me, me doing what I'm about to do, and that is to redirect you away from focusing in one fashion. So with that said, of course, if they're uh, veteran-centric, that's something you're going to want to name, but you're not going to want to hang your hat on that. Um, and so not telling you how to do your job, understand you're very, very good at what you do, um, but you know we have built this industry, we made a life out of this industry, and I can promise you that if you focus in one area too much as opposed to looking at it from a general standpoint, you're going to miss opportunity. Um, so when you talk about veterans, uh, we do have our specialized programs that will qualify these folks for tax credits that they're just not going to, these folks, business owners, uh, for tax credits that they're just not going to access by working with anybody but us. And so there's that. But then I would immediately segue into who we are as a company and what that entire app does, and that is we are going to find across the board avenues through which to make that business more profitable in a non-disruptive fashion without any downtime, without changing anything they're doing. We're going to identify ways to make them more profitable and in a comprehensive manner. And we're going to do it not at their risk but at mine. We're going to do it on my dollar. And we're only going to get paid if and when we're successful. And then again, only as a percentage of that success. When that becomes your presentation, your pitch, which is all of, I don't know, I ramble a bit, so maybe it was three sentences, um, it's really, really hard to lose. You know, it's, these business owners that are out there, and again, I said this at the beginning of the call, you got 28 million of these guys and gals. And every single one of them are beat up from every angle. Somebody's always trying to sell them something. Employees are always trying to get one up on them and not show up at work. I mean, these guys and gals give it their all. Most of them don't succeed. You guys know the stats behind it. Um, now, you're the first person to come to the table and say, not only am I here to enhance your success, to make you more profitable, we're not even going to do it in a fashion that puts anything at risk. We're not going to, no downtime, no disruption, no change of vendors, no this, no that. Instead, I'm going to come here, I'm going to spend my money to make you more successful. You owe me nothing unless I, unless I do what I say I can do. That's it. It's the only time you owe me anything, if I'm successful. That picture, that big picture is what's going to get you eight, nine out of ten people you talk to to say, yep, let's sign up right now, let's get this thing going. And so... If you're dealing with a company that is very veteran-centric, I would throw out that little bit of teaser language that I touched on a moment ago as far as veterans, but then I'd immediately turn into big picture. It's that big picture that hits home every time because you just never know, and so many of our advisors um, can make this mistake until we recondition them. You just never know what topic it is that's important to that client at that exact moment in time that you're talking to them. And if you bring up one that's not top of mind, then you get a no or a yeah, we'll see, or I don't know, get back to me. Now it's infinitely harder to get them to sign on the dotted line because you've got to sell away from a no. You've got to overcome a maybe later. If you come big picture and there's 15 things we can do for them, one of them will be the one they're thinking about right now. That's great. Thank you, Jason. I, you know, I just I've talked to a lot of people that are on the phone right now with us about this. Is you know, this is so unique, and and like you had already mentioned towards the the top of the call, Jason, is there's not really a lot of competition, and this is a or there's is no competition. I mean, there isn't anybody out there doing what Stride does, and I've had a really hard time ever envisioning a customer not wanting to proceed and see what's available to them. It's no risk. The you know, it, it's basically we have to perform, Stride has to perform, 
in order for them to ever have any sort of cost. And, it's, and if you really look at it, in my opinion, it's not a cost. It really isn't because it's money that they otherwise weren't aware of, that they had open to them or that the business could be getting back. And, you know, somebody was hired to go and find that for them. And then the company who went out and found it for them, yeah, they get a little, they, you know, they get a little piece of the action, and that's how we all make commissions. So, I, I really always look at this as if there truly is a no cost. The procurement fees, I don't even really deem as a cost in my own mind, and I don't think any anybody on this phone ever should. It's again, the Stride's going to perform, we're going to perform for them, we're going to find find those dollars, and it's a win win all the way around. Um, I, I wanted to see if, um, I know I've been I work a lot with uh, with a number of you on the phone, but Gene, um, Troy, do you guys have any questions? I know we talk a lot. Excuse me, this is Larice Webb. Um, I had a quick question. Yeah, Larice, absolutely. Um, in terms of um, franchises or and corporations, what, what would you be your strategy on approaching um, the two? Um, if, if you don't mind, expand on that just a little bit. What do you mean um, when you say you know approaching the two? Um, basically, um, I'm saying if I have a franchise, say it's a franchise Quiznos, um, and with this Quiznos, you know, I have that owner. Um, of course, I would talk directly with try to get that owner. But what if it's a corporation like a Waffle House? Um, um, one of my cousins. Um, is a GM at a Waffle House. So then I would need to go to the corporate office, which is in Atlanta. And I'm just saying the different approaches. Okay. Um, <clears throat> thank you for that. So let, let's use the um, the Quiznos example. Um, as, a, as a franchisee, they have quite a bit of autonomy. And as, as you indicated, they can make a lot of their own decisions. And so, um, you know, your approach to them is very uh, similar to what I outlined a few moments ago when, when the um, veterans question was asked. And that, again, is big picture. Um, very simply, I'm, I'm here, what I do, functions, uh, you know, however you want to initiate or identify yourself is uh, to work with business owners to make them more profitable without any form of, of disruption, without changing vendors, this, that, or the other. Um, our process is very simple. Um, we work with you uh, without you know, using up a lot of your time, without, much, without any obligation of time from you. We're going to spend our money to pursue these benefits, uh, no upfront cost, uh, and, and you're only going to pay us if and when we've been successful in identifying and realizing these uh, benefits uh, for you guys. Um, depending on the service. Certain services, we identify them, and then we give the data to their tax planner to then go realize other services, uh, such as um, waste or whatever the case may be, we actually realize the benefit. So it it's, all depends on its semantics at that point, but you guys get the gist of it. Uh, when you present it like that, that Quiznos owner is, uh, statistically speaking, highly likely uh, to move forward with you. When you look at the, uh, do you say Waffle House or Pancake House? I'm sorry, I, I didn't, I don't remember Waffle, what you said. Waffle House. Waffle House. Um, what you'll find is a lot of places like that, there's, um, again, I use the, the word autonomy, um, there are uh, certain uh, businesses and locations and managerial styles that will result in a manager having a degree of autonomy. In other words, there are certain things that they can do themselves up to a level, then beyond that, everything else needs to go to corporate. Um, Whichever it is, if they can do nothing, if they can do a lot, if they can do somewhere in between, you would have to start your conversation there. I would, of course, suggest starting your conversation there and then let them refer you up. In other words, you know, partner with them. Uh, to, and a partner is relative, but partner with them to say, okay, you like the idea, you understand the value, you see the benefit, you as a manager are tasked with making this business as successful as you can uh, within your uh, job function and, and skill set. Um, it benefits you, you're a better manager, maybe a pay raise, maybe a promotion, maybe a this, that, or that, I have no idea what their structure is, but it benefits you as a manager to engage in activities that make this business more successful, and that's me. So who can you put me in front of to take this thing to the next level? And so that would be the approach there. Okay, thank you for that. And um, how long does the process normally take, um, if you said on the average, to um, cure the funds and things like that? Excellent question. Uh, that will depend on three variables. Um, and I'll start with, the, start with you guys. How good are you at follow-up? 
So if you're an advisor that's going to schedule a discovery call, not show up to the discovery call, not go talk to your client, not collect docs, it's going to take a while for us to do your job. Um, if you are uh, a business owner that is uh, easily distracted and doesn't give us what we need, which is rare, uh, because you want to make more money, you want to be more profitable, then it's going to take us a while to hound you, harass you, and, and move it forward. Beyond that, if you guys do your part and the business owner is engaged, as they so frequently are, uh, now the final variable is service. You know, which service are we talking about? Uh, we can have uh, the results summary in the hands of uh, the business owner for a cost sake, for example, in uh, we're, we're still taking them right now to be completed before the end of the year. Right? And so there's, what's the date today? Today's 19th, 18th? Um, so yeah, we've got 13 days. Uh, so that's an example of how fast we can do a cost sake study. Um, property tax will be on the other end of the extreme. Can we do it fast? Absolutely we can. However, um, there are variables with regard to uh, how different states and regions do them. There are some areas where you can, uh, you can amend or petition for property tax alteration 365 days a year. There's other places where you can do it one day a year. So your worst case scenario there is uh, the one date a year was yesterday and I signed you up as a client today. I now have 364 more days to wait and that's nothing we can do about that in a particular region where that's the law. So that's, that's the other extreme. For the bulk of our audits uh, and, and what we do, you're going to see 30 to 45 uh, days before the money's in their hand. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Yep. Thank you for those answers. That was a great question, Larry. Thank you for bringing that up. I know that's been kind of a frequently asked question is usually what's the general turnaround time and and I knew that it just kind of depended, right, the area and the certain laws depending on, on where the business owner is located. Um, Gene, mm -hmm. I see that you're you're unmuted. I know I, I called on you a while ago. Did you have something that you wanted to ask, Jason? Um, no, I actually don't have any questions. Um, <laughs> the biggest thing is just, uh, you know, learning as you go and then listening and listening and fine-tuning how you're verbalizing and, and getting the information across and getting the reaction. And, and the more I listen to the calls and I listen to Jason, the more you learn that, that lingo a little bit better so it rolls off your tongue when you're trying to talk to them. <laughs> it sounds like you've been tortured by having to listen to me more than once. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't entered any nightmares yet. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> Thank you, Gina. I'm notorious for, for the rest of you guys. I'm notoriously long-winded, so I, that, that's where that joke comes from. <laughs> okay, question. Hey, can – Yeah, go ahead, can, Bob. Uh, oh, or Troy. Yeah, either one of you. Troy, go, ahead, you go ahead, uh, I'll ask it. Okay, so my question is, once you, you take on a, a client and everything and you do, you're doing everything to capture the money and everything like that, so that's the first month or two months or anything like that. Do you go back and uh, look at things annually? Do you go back in and we keep that client? Do you go back in there and an analyze anything uh, uh, into the future? We do. Uh, so that's a good question. Uh, there are certain audits that require uh, monthly analysis. So, for example, if, if um, you know, I know uh, merchant processing is something that you guys can engage in if for whatever reason, I have no idea why you wouldn't, um, if you didn't take them over in that regard and they stayed where they were at, when we do our merchant audit, we audit the account every month uh, for three years. Um, waste is an ongoing audit. Uh, cost seg is something that we – cost segregation is something we revisit. Uh, R&D will be more uh, annual in nature, um, look back and forward. Uh, so there's a lot of different things that we do. SRP is an annual summary. So there's a lot of different things that we do that will um, result in an annual review. And so on those annual reviews, do we as the client the, – the representatives turn them over to you or got them as a client? Do we get money in the future or just a one-time? Nope. Every time we make money, you make money. Okay. Anytime you make money, we make money. That's a great statement. <laughs> and what well, is that's that's a, sounds like a fair deal. Keep you guys in, <laughs> yeah, best way to keep you guys engaged. That's what we're here for. Okay. What is Crystal? the SRP? I'm sorry. Could you say it again, please? The Ooh. SRP? Yep. What was? I'm sorry. What was the question on that? What is the SRP? Gotcha. Uh, SRP is an acronym for Stride Retirement Program. Uh, it requires a uh, life insurance license. Oh, okay. No, uh, okay. All right. All right. I didn't understand that one. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
which, by the way, guys, if you're not life licensed, is an extremely easy thing to accomplish. Um, in most, there's month-long courses if you go a day or two a week, um, but in every state, there's a week-long course you can take. Uh, that'll choose. Some of them are even uh, home study anymore. So if that's something you guys are interested in, it's a really unique tool, proprietary tool, um, greater than a 90% close rate. Uh, so if if we uh, hit the ele- hit the client with the elevator pitch greater than ninety percent, say yep, I'm interested in learning more, moving forward, and getting you guys on the phone with my tax planner. Um, so it's it's something that is certainly worth consideration if you're not currently licensed. So you're saying that all we have to do is get the license, then you go and do all the work. <laughs> all the work is relative. Most of the work, yes. <laughs> I have a quick question. Uh, I'm so sorry, Steve. Um So. If I have a life license or have a team of people with life licenses, um, you're essentially saying that I could utilize this um, retirement program uh, to be able to offer it to business owners and their employees, or is it only for the business owners? Can you kind of explain the, the program and the benefit of a person that has a life license being able to offer this, please? Sure. Um, so this is uh, one of our more complex topics. I won't be able to go through all of it uh, right now, but I'll give you, you know, the, a, a basic summary. And then there's extensive uh, knowledge in our back office for that. In fact, uh, two hours of, of detailed technical training on that one topic alone. Um, so SRP, Stride Retirement Program, is just for the business owner. They can elect to include others, uh, but they don't have to. It's a non-qualified program. Uh, so that means that it's not a SEP, simple KEO 401 or any of those. And the benefit to that is that they then, unlike all those other programs, can do it just for themselves. Uh, it also means that there's no testing requirements, contribution restrictions, ownership rules, or discrimination rules. It means that they can do as much as they want, how they want, when they want, only for themselves. So that's a, a huge, huge benefit there because when you look at the retirement programs that exist that, that you know, so many people try to participate in as business owners, they're highly restricted from a participation standpoint, um, highly restricted from a dollar amount standpoint, um, and actually there's a lot of pitfalls associated with them, in my opinion. And so years ago, we sought to create a, uh, a program uh, that would uh, put us in a position to be able to offer qualified plan type benefits. If you look at the sales pitch of the qualified plan, it's that your money is going to go in on a pre-tax basis, so you get a tax benefit on the front end. It's going to grow tax deferred, so you get a tax benefit throughout. Now, of course, when you take your money out, you get taxed and rather aggressively, um, but you know that is what it is. So we saw it again to create a program that would take on the feel of a qualified uh, program but, but, or plan, but not be qualified, so we could avoid all of those restrictions. And that's what we built. So the SRP creates the opportunity, and note that I said the opportunity is not absolute. I'll go through that in a moment. Uh, The SRP creates the opportunity for a tax deduction on the front end. So now I can go head-to-head with the qualified plan. So you get a tax benefit on the front end. I've got the opportunity for a tax benefit on the front end. Qualified plan is going to grow tax deferred. I'm absolutely going to grow tax deferred with my program. Qualified plan is going to uh, tax you aggressively on your distributions. You can take your cash tax-free out of my program. So I have the opportunity for every benefit of the qualified plan without the downside of taxation and distribution. Um, We also uh, can put them in in mediums that have fantastic historical returns with zero downside risk risk from a market standpoint. So they they participate in market gains but not losses. And then uh, we have a front-loading mechanism where – a qualified plan, of course, you put a dollar aside, you have a dollar working for you. In our program, uh, we do front loading, so uh, it, it's a, a 4% rate. Um, when you spend a dollar, you've got $25 working for you. And so it's a, it's a very, very comprehensive program, a lot of opportunity. I said before I would talk about the um, <clears throat> tax deduction. Uh, again, there's lots of mechanics to go through that are beyond the scope of this call. But uh, fundamentally, we look at our entire book of business for – decade and a half plus that the program has been running, what we see is that statistically speaking, 96% of our clients' tax planners, and we work with a tax planner in every single case, 96% of the tax planners elect to take a tax deduction on behalf of their clients relative to the use of our program. That, of course, then leaves 4% that don't, but of the 4% that don't, uh, 3% are 501c3s that don't pay taxes, so there's no deduction to take. Um, so then we look at 99% of the total qualifying book of business, their tax planners elect to take a deduction. 
So I use the word possible opportunity because it's not absolute, but if I look at the stats, a 99% likelihood is really, really darn high. And so that's, that's a brief overview of the program. Thank you. Uh, I, yes, I look forward to learning more about it and getting everything to the back office of that and, and learn a little more about it for sure. Thank you. Yeah, I know I've had a couple of people actually text me on my cell phone. I have a life license. I have a life license. So we we got, <laughs> got some interest there. So <laughs> great question. Thank you for bringing that up, Osiris. And then, um, all right, so Troy. Yeah, thank you. Hey, Jeremy. Um, uh, Jason, thank you. Um, so if you – uh, if you have a newer business that um, is fairly recent, a lot of times the first you know year or two they're not profitable because they have a lot of mm-hmm. a lot of write offs. Um, they're not profitable on paper anyway. Um, how how do you approach those businesses? Um, because a lot of you know like tax incentives and that kind of thing. They don't see an immediate benefit from that, do they? I mean, it's a tax deferment, or uh, maybe you can speak to that a little bit if you understand my sure. question. Yeah. I would argue that um, because those businesses exist, um, you know, our, our program is that much more applicable. So, you know, what I mean when I say that is you've, you've got – listen, guys, we're not the only company out there that does cost sake studies. No question about it. You know, we're not the only company out there that does R&D. We're not the only company that out there that does property tax, whatever the case may be. Um, we're the only company that does all of them. Uh, in fact, our closest competitor offers three of our 38 services. And they haven't been doing it as long as us. They come more, nowhere near our volume. There's plenty of risk for the client, upfront cost, non-contingency, blah, 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 blah. So while as an entity we have no competition, that doesn't mean there aren't other institutions out there that do pieces of what we do. There's a lot of pitfalls associated with working with them, but I'm going to narrow in on just the one, and, and that is that what happens when all you do are cost seg, or maybe you're one of our the closest competitor we have, and you do cost seg, R&D, and property tax. Um, great. Like you just said, what happens if, uh, if you're not paying taxes? Uh, so now your entire company is not applicable, or at least it's, it's only applicable – uh, so property tax audit, that's an expense mitigation. We, it's tax mitigation, but it's mostly expense. I don't care if you're profitable or not. You still have to pay your property tax. So maybe you can do one, but even that only applies to those businesses that own their physical structure. The rest of them that are leasing or renting doesn't apply to them at all. And so that's the value of what we bring to the table because it really doesn't matter what type of business you are. Across the full spectrum of services, we're going to provide you benefits somewhere. So if it's not accelerated appreciation with a cost seg study because you are not profitable, well, that's fine. WANSI is a tax credit. That's a check from the government. I don't care whether or not you're profitable. A check is a check. You still get a check. Property tax, if you own the building, we're going to do that. But if you don't own the building and uh, you're doing retail sales, fine. Merchant audit, waste audit. Uh, again, I can go area by area. It really doesn't matter what type of business you're in. I can provide some benefit. And... So does that mean every single business in America? No, you'll have the perfect storm where somebody's not profitable, they have negative cash flow, uh, they rent, they don't process any business there, they don't have any waste. Uh, you know, uh, an entrepreneur working out of the basement. No, we're probably not, but even then, SRP might be viable. You're probably not going to do that much for that guy or gal. Um, but if you're brick and mortar, and you know you're actually doing business profitable or not we're going to be able to provide some form of benefit for you cool thank you perfect yep and then um we did have another question linda i'm going to go ahead and uh, unmute you linda had a question okay uh hi this is linda marte uh what is the is the the, the retirement program covers the owners only or but the owners and the employees they can choose to include the employees, but they very, very rarely do. It's it's built for the employer. Now, understand, if the employer has a, a SEP, simple, KEO, or most frequently a 401k, when they use our yeah. program, they don't have to turn that off. They can just leave that in place and let the employees use that. This is something special just for them. See, the idea behind it is that if I'm a business owner, and let, let, I mean, let's just say I'm a successful business owner, and, and that, you know, the... That's very subjective, what success is or isn't. So I'm just throwing numbers out there. I'm not saying that somebody's not successful if they're below the threshold. But let's just say I'm a business owner making a quarter million dollars a year 
or half a million, <clears throat> excuse me, or, or three quarters of a million or a million or whatever the number is. Well, depending on what my employees put into their 401, I can't put a whole heck of a lot in there. Certainly not yeah. enough to set enough money aside and get the return so that when I retire, I can maintain the lifestyle that I'm accustomed to as a high cash flowing business owner. And so, you know, if they want to keep offering a 401 for their employees, that's great. I mean, it really is wonderful. But for themselves, well, for themselves, we're going to give them a tool that they can actually use to get to where they want to go. That okay. will get are them. You, are yes. you telling that? I was just trying to give them annuity or life insurance. We use uh, IUL predominantly, not exclusively, but predominantly Index Universal Life um, okay. as the medium within our program. Um, so that's, you, that's many times the investment tool we're going to use. Are you using premium financing or leverage planning? Um, we're, well, it's, um, there's a leveraging component to it. Uh, we do, because there's a, a, a lending component to it, it is technically classified as premium finance, but many of the carriers out there don't view us as that. Um, yes. And so they have very, very different requirements uh, for us as compared to any would-be competitor. Okay, so you have already a built-in uh, lender to do the premium financing or leverage planning? Yes. We okay, have a series so. of lenders. Okay, you already a series or a couple or just one? No, a series. Okay, all right, I got it. I'm licensed to real estate, uh, insurance license, so I could fit in. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Linda. And then, um, Osiris, yeah. I know you had one other thing on, on SRP. Are you talking to me, Jeremy? Oh, no. Uh, uh, no, I was asking. Um, Osiris said that he had one more question regarding SRP, so I just wanted to see if he can get that in real quick. Yes, yeah, sorry. This is a very question. excellent program, uh, Jason. I'm sorry, could you say it again, please? That's really an excellent program. And if you have built in a dot with uh, various lenders, that's really a very lucrative program. Well, thank you very much for that. There's actually a laundry list of things like loan assumability and all sorts of different stuff that can help from a business exit strategy standpoint that may mitigate taxes at the point of sale of the business as well. There's actually a lot of components to it that I've come nowhere near covering on this call uh, that, that further enhance it. So it's, um, yeah, it's a lot of fun. It's a good program. I, I'll work with you on that one because uh, I work with leverage planning or premium financing. It's just a matter of like, qualifying. So it's going to be a good uh, door opener for clients. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Linda. Yes, Great question. Okay, Osiris, did you want to um, get your last question about SRP, and then I want to check in with you, Jason, see how you're doing on time. Okay. Yes, you have. You may have answered it. I just wanted to confirm. Uh, with with the the uh, SRP product, uh, were you saying that the, if you put you know, as a business owner, they can put in as much money as they want into this, um, you know, uh, retirement program um, a year. There's no max. And then were you also saying that um, the other benefit is that um, if they want to take money out, that there is no uh, penalty if they if they want to take money out of that. Is that what I just wanted to confirm that was what you had said. That is correct. Now we say as much as they want. Um, it, it's within certain confines um, as far as putting money in. What I mean when I say that is there's a mathematical equation that goes into determining um, because we're using an insurance chassis, uh, there's what's called insurable capacity. So while we're not buying it for purposes of insurance, unless it's an estate plan or a key man buy, sell, and we're using it uh, with insurance in mind, overwhelmingly we're using it for cash. Um, but because it's parked inside an insurance chassis to get the unique tax uh, benefits that are uh, inherent to insurance, we still have to go through an equation to um, to determine what the insurable capacity is, uh, and that'll that'll determine on a high end what what level to which they can uh, participate. Now, with that said, what I will tell you is almost universally our clients can participate at a bigger level than they do so it's never an encumbrance um and in the instances like for example uh we had one client last year um whose level of participation was seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year and you know even with that we're able to to go out and, and get the approval uh from the the carriers and the um reinsurers so 
overwhelmingly you're going to see clients that want to participate to the tune of 25 a year, 50 grand a year, 100 grand a year. Um, it's extremely rare that you're going to see, you know, 750 or a million dollars a year. But even then, you know, if it's if they can afford it, we can figure it out. Um, as far as distributions, uh, they take the money out in the form of policy loans. Now we're getting a little bit more technical again than, than uh, the confines of the call will allow. Um, but because we're using permanent insurance, uh, pursuant to Supreme Court ruling in the mid-80s, when you're using permanent insurance, the cash that accumulates therein, you can take as air quote, you can't see me using my fingers right now, but I'm using the air quotes um, as policy loans, uh, which in, you know many people within the industry say that it's, a, it's considered an early distribution of eventual tax-free death benefit. However, they interpret it that warrants the Supreme Court ruling. You do long-standing precedent, thousands upon thousands upon thousands of cases that have been issued this way in the permanent insurance world uh, for taking that money out on a tax-free basis. And so that tax-free distribution is what we use to get money out tax-free in our program. Because it's not qualified, the uh, pre-59.5, 10% IRS penalty, of course, doesn't apply. Uh, the RMD at 70.5 does not apply. It just it doesn't apply. It's not qualified, so none of that stuff comes to bear. All right. That's great. Thank you so much. Uh, I, I didn't know a lot about the SRP program, so I, I really do appreciate everybody asking all of those questions. So I think that's definitely something that Jason, you and I can talk about, or maybe if you guys host uh, um, another call on your guys' end, maybe we can direct some folks who are in, more interested in SRP to learn more and, and just kind of broaden on that discussion. Um, Joe, I saw that you unmuted yourself. Did you have a question for Jason? Joe Wiggins? Uh, no, I just uh, appreciate everything uh, that he does, and uh, I am a member of uh, Stride Director of them. So it's awesome. Very good. All right. Thank you. Good deal. Thank you. All right, Jason, how are you doing on time? There was one other thing I wanted to bring up, but I want to make sure we have everybody who has questions getting their answers. But I want to check with you and how you're doing on time first. We're getting tight on time. It's about 7:30, and I've got a uh, I've got a flight coming up here in just a, a bit tomorrow morning that I need to go prepare for. So I can go a touch longer, but not too much. All right. Okay. Good. I appreciate. It. I know we're we're going a little bit over where we normally go, and I kind of had a feeling we would today, um, just because there's there's obviously a lot of moving parts with uh, Stride Solutions, and I know we've had a very high level of interest over here on on our side. So I expected us to go over. Uh, are there any other questions out there for Jason while we still have him? Okay, Jason, I do want to bring something up real quick, and you don't have to go um, you know, super long into it or, or by any means, but um, recently on a discovery call that I had with Chris, um, we were talking with a um, commercial real estate. And one thing, and, and, I, and I believe Osiris also knows a little bit what I'm talking about here, but there is actually a way for you guys to uh, assess the value of the property prior to that sale, which is kind of, I kind of look at it as almost like the Watsi program, but with but with property sales, where you can actually go in and take a look and see what sort of um, depreciation you would be able to find on that land before somebody sells it. So it's um, an additional value and advantage of somebody who's you know in that uh, commercial real estate environment to take a look at that uh, that property before they list it or while it's listed. Would you mind just talking about that just for a quick second? Sure. Um, so really, when we talk about working with commercial realtors, we're looking at two, fundamentally two, um, of, of, of our audits. And so not that the others don't apply, because if you're a business, then they all apply. Um, but what, when you're talking about partnering with commercial realtors, um, th these are the two that will really get their attention. Uh, and that's a cost seg study, uh, seg being an abbreviation for segregation. So cost segregation and, uh, and the property tax audit. Um, cost segregation is accelerating the depreciation of the building uh, and any expenses associated thereof. So your purchase price, your build price, your renovation price, uh, typically uh, if you're working with a CPA, they're going to depreciate that over a straight line 39-and-a-half-year uh, time period, whereas we're going to do an engineering-based study, uh, come in and, and uh, uh, figuratively, not literally, but figuratively tear that building apart um, and put all the different bits and pieces on their own depreciation schedule, uh, thereby uh, uh, aggressively accelerating it. And instead of waiting 39 years to get your money, you, you get a big chunk of it today. Um, and then you can put it to work for you over the 39 years. So you see when you're working with a commercial realtor, well, by definition, 
all their all their clients are going to qualify for this. Same thing with property tax audit. All their clients are going to qualify for this. It's universal, which makes it very appealing to them. Now, what Jeremy is touching on is if I'm a commercial realtor and I'm competing against every other commercial realtor to get clients, to help clients buy, to help clients sell, to get my commissions and do what I do, well, how cool is it when every property I deal with comes with a air quote stimulus package that no other property comes with. Well, if I'm a seller, anytime I want to sell a building, I'm whether I know it or not, I'm in competition with every other building in the area that's, that's trying to sell. And if I'm tied in with an agent that brings with him services like this, then my property is more sellable. It carries more value because, well, let's just say there's five properties within a 10 mile radius for sale for $2 million or you know, similarly priced properties. And four are for sale for $2 million, but one of them is for sale for $2 million and it comes with an agent that did a study uh, or did a quick review with Presentation Pro and says, yep, uh, the day you buy this, uh, I believe that we're going to go knock 20 grand off in property tax and then we're going to do a cost seg study uh, that's going to put $300,000 back in your pocket. Well, now that property is the one I'm going to buy. If, if I looked at five of them and, and for all intents and purposes, they're all really right there. They're all in and running as far as the, the building that meets my needs. And there's one thing I'm going to look at as a deciding factor. It's going to be the fact that this one comes with this benefit. Um, so it's better for me as the buyer. It's better for the seller because, well, they get their great, greater likelihood of full realized sale value, greater likelihood for a rapid sale, greater likelihood that of all the properties for sale that theirs will be the one that actually sells. So everybody wins. Uh, the commercial realtor wins because they they sold the property faster. They could move on to another property, make more commissions doing what they do, and they win again because they made some commission on this as well. So it's one of those you know rare rare circumstances where every single body in the equation gets a win. That's great. That was something that I just learned uh, recently, I, I believe, last week, and I just I I saw that and it just kind of blew my mind. And I, I know what you guys do with the Watsi program, and it's it's very similar. You know, where you're basically getting to pre-screen an employee to see what sort of benefit you're going to get by hiring it. It seems like this is the same same kind of logic that applies, you know, towards this real estate industry where you can go in and basically pre-screen that property, so it gives. It gives that ind- that individual a leg up, you know. Same for hiring, yep. same for the, for the real estate. So I thought that was extremely powerful. What would be your suggestion to folks on this call, should they know somebody in that space, how to kind of approach that that partnership? Well, I would say in a very self serving fashion, make sure you belong to Stride. <laughs> then when you belong to Stride, you know, then when you belong to Stride, what you get is in the hub, uh, you get this really cool page that, um, and we, we actually detailed this just last week, um, you get this really cool page that shows two videos side by side. One is all the benefits associated in a generic sense with Stride, and then the next video next to it is uh, covers specific industries. One is commercial realtors. So you go ahead and send them the link, you let them watch the video, they get all excited. Below that is another link for 25 hours of recorded testimonials. So unlike you know all these other companies that, that say, oh, Joe S. with a hand with a, with a written in quote that maybe Joe S. wrote, maybe they just made it up, 25 hours of people telling their story. And what they do is they join your team and blow up your business and make you more money. And so, yeah, self-serving for me, yes, I'll admit, but on the same hand, works really well for you too. Yeah, I just wanted you to point that out because if, if you guys know anybody in that space, in the, in the commercial real estate space, you know, and, uh, approach them. We can set up a call with Stride for them to kind of talk about the strategic partnership. Um, Stride does that as well. Um, there's been a couple of you on the phone where we've we've already worked on doing that, some strategic partnerships that ultimately you know, they can be on your team to kind of feed you um, more business. Um, and I'll, for those of you that are on this call that uh, haven't elected yet to become a Stride agent through Agora Advantage and, and you kind of guys feel now like you understand it better and you're, you're interested in doing that to get all the additional benefits, uh, the app, Presentation Pro, all of these wonderful things that Jason's been talking about, um, you guys can do that right from the marketplace just so everybody knows. Um, it is under the training tab, kind of opening uh, paragraph 
It says click here if you'd like to. That will take you over where you can actually enroll to become a Stride agent directly. That is totally up to you whether you want to do that or not. If you don't, we still have it worked out where we can submit your client's business. Um, you guys are still making commission and all of that. Um, Jason, I just want to say to you, thank you so much for spending um, you know, over an hour and a half of your time with us tonight. I know it's a little bit later back where you are, and, and a lot of people are on the phone um, are also in a later time zone, so thank you to all of you. 